Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. This is Annie and I'm a cold person clay artist. I make cute clay charms to boost your serotonin and I also own a small business known as Sugar Cafe Charms. And one of the most common question I get is what kind of clay I use. So I use homemade clay or cold porcelain clay and as the name suggests, this is a type of clay that you can actually make at your own home and the method is also pretty easy and standard. With that being said, there are a few steps that you need to be careful about and also there are some tips and tricks that I have learned over the years of making this clay and with this video, I want to share them with you guys. So let's get started. So the version of clay that we are making is called cooked cold porcelain and that's why it needs heating. I heat mine in a microwave but you can also do it on the stove top. In case you are using a microwave like me, make sure to use a microwave safe pool and in case you are using the stove top then make sure to use a non-stick pan that you no longer use for cooking. So the very first thing I am adding in the bowl is 1 cup of white PVA glue and we will be taking the same ratio of cornstarch or commonly known as corn flour. ideal ratio of PVA glue to corn flour is 1 is to 1 by volume and not by weight. So make sure that you are using a cup as a measurement rather than a weighing scale. I like to mix in both of these components first before adding all the other ingredients to break up all the lumps. Next you want to add preservative of your choice. I use synthetic vinegar and also you will be needing a oil. I use coconut oil but any colorless and flavorless oil should work. You can also basically use any baby oil or even hair oil but just make sure that they don't have a lot of color. Next you want to mix all of the ingredients very thoroughly and once you are done with that the texture should be something like this. The basic cold porcelain clay paste is ready but for me I like to add acrylic color to mine. I add a small amount of white acrylic color in the clay paste because this clay has a tendency to turn yellow after it dries. So this way I can avoid it but this is totally optional if you don't want to add it it's totally fine you can skip it but since most of my charms are white or pastel color I like to do this step. After giving it a final mix this should be the texture of the clay. It should be runny when you lift the spoon and it should also be able to form this type of circle. I microwave this for 30 seconds and you will not see a lot of difference but you will see a thin skin forming on the surface. You just want to break it and mix it thoroughly before putting it back in the microwave. This is how it looks after the second 30 seconds and this time you will see a lot of small lumps forming in the clay that is totally normal. Just mix in all of that and then it goes back in the microwave. After the third interval, you will visibly see that the clay has started forming and it is way more thicker. So just mix everything up and then it goes back in the microwave. And this is how it looks after the final fourth interval. Since I have been making this clay for a really long time, I now know the timing with my microwave. But your timing may differ. It might take less time. It might take more time. But basically you want your clay to look something like this finally and it should be slightly sticky. One of the way you can test this is take a small piece of clay and rub it between your finger and it should slightly stick to your fingers. And remember at this stage the clay is still hot and it's continuing to cook. So as you can see the clay does leave residue on my fingertips but when I apply it on my palm it shouldn't leave any residue. This is when you know that the clay is ready and you can move on to the next step. So allow the clay to cool off just a bit but not too much while the clay is still warm you want to knead it. So the clay at this point should be pretty hot so be careful that you don't get any burns. If you want you can also wear gloves at this stage but I am kind of used to it. You want to knead this clay until it is completely cool to touch and that should take around 4-5 to five minutes. I am also adding a little bit of cornstarch 1 tablespoon at a time to adjust the consistency. 
if you feel like that the clay is too sticky add in a little bit more cornstarch but make sure that you only add a really small amount at a time so that the clay doesn't become too stiff and in case you feel it is too stiff you can add in a teaspoon of glycerin don't add water because this is a biodegradable clay there is a chance that it might get molds if you add water so add glycerin but make sure that you don't use water at this point i personally need this clay until it's completely cool to touch which is about 4 to 5 minutes the more you need the clay the better the texture will be so make sure that you put in a little bit of hard work at this point and although this might look like a lot of work believe me the process is so satisfying because it's so fluffy and so soft you will know that the clay is ready when the clay will stop sticking to your fingers and also to your desk and then you will have a final ball of soft fluffy cold porcelain clay you can also do a quality check on your clay by doing the teardrop test. So to basically do this quality test, you want to pull apart a small piece of clay and when you do so, it should form a teardrop like this. And as you can see, our clay is perfectly made and it does form teardrop every single time. The texture of this clay is super soft and a lot of people say that it's like well conditioned polymer clay but I would say it's more fluffier than polymer clay and is extremely satisfying to work with. Unlike polymer clay, this is a air dry clay which means any exposure to air will start drying out this clay so you need to store it very properly. And here is how I store mine. So I first form it into a log shape, you can make any shape with it, a circle, heart, start, anything that you want. The surface of this clay is something that dries up super fast. To avoid that, I apply a little bit of oil all over the surface of the clay. I am again using the same coconut oil that I used to make the clay, but you can use the oil of your preference. You can also use petroleum jelly like Vaseline or you can also use any body lotion or body moisturizer. After which you want to wrap up your clay in a piece of plastic wrap. You can also use a ziplock bag if you want to but I just use a plastic wrap and then this goes into an airtight container. In case you are planning to keep this clay for a few months then make sure that you are using a good quality airtight container since any exposure to air will start drying out the clay. But if you are planning to keep it for a really short time any kind of container should work. When I made this clay for the very first time during the pandemic, I thought once I get a little bit of practice, I will switch over to polymer clay but that never happened because I just continued using it and I thought it was a way cheaper alternative than polymer clay. I know there are a lot of people who are like me who are interested in making clay stuff but are a little intimidated because polymer clay can be an expensive hobby so this might be something that you might want to try out. And if you do make this clay, don't forget to tag me over on Instagram and I can't wait to see your creations. You all can also check out my previous video if you want to know more about the basics of this clay and also i'm planning a lot more long format videos so let me know what you guys want to see in the next video that's it for today see you in the next one oh and i also hope that you guys liked today's video this was a much requested video so i hope you guys enjoyed it